conceptual people talk about it all of the elements All right, hello everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Another segment of the Black Voice. Uh, hope everybody has had an unbelievable week. Uh, hopefully you uh, achieve the goals that you set for the week. Even if you haven't, press that reset button, get started on building and preparing for next week. As long as you're breathing, you're still in the fight. Uh, I have been talking about this since I believe Sunday or Monday. We were supposed to make it happen, I believe, on Tuesday, uh, Monday or Tuesday, something like that. And, you know, uh, two people with extremely busy schedules sometimes find it hard to get together. Uh, but I've been talking and sharing with you. This isn't the first time that I've had my first of all friend as well as colleague on. Uh, he has shared with us before. He has been a source of inspiration for me for years. He has been a supporter of the work I do for years. And that needs to be appreciated uh, above all things because this is a thankless uh, work that we do. So when someone shows their appreciation by actually putting what their money where their mouth is, uh, it's immensely uh, powerful in the sense that it really makes you understand that people aren't just patting you on the back and say, hey, you're doing a good job. When people put their money where their mouth is, it says, not only do I see what you're doing, I believe in what you're doing, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure you get it done. Uh, so for that, Doc, I thank you. But uh, here's my friend and colleague, Dr. Michael Blanchard. We're here to talk about a couple of topics, but first I want to uh, let him talk about our, our latest project, we worked on a project together, which I thought was, to me, was very exciting because we shared and talked, we walked each other through our different journeys. Uh, I was able to be a friend and a colleague and a, a listening and sounding board as he walked his journey into his doc, doc, doctoral degree uh, in education. Uh, the work that he has done in the field of student persistence is immensely important. And it's going to be something that I look forward to working with him together in the future on. Uh, but he's walked me through, without him even knowing probably, but he's walked me through at least several books I've written, just talking to him. And it's like, oh, wow. And then, you know, I get off the phone with him and run to the computer and get to type it uh, because he, he ignites and challenges me to think uh, outside of myself, which is important. You know, you can get a yes man anywhere. Uh, but when you get somebody that sits up and says, what about this, Doc? You know, and, and somebody that doesn't back down when you push back, uh, I think is extremely important. So uh, I'm going to introduce uh, to some of you and bring back to others uh, Dr. Michael Blanchard. Uh, first of all, Mike, let's just talk about where the Book of Lamentations came from. Tell us about the Book of Lamentations, which is our latest project, well, really your project that I got to piggyback on and uh, uh, make some small contributions to. Tell me uh, where it came from, what inspired you, and how do you see it playing out? Well, actually, it started uh, in 2013, man, when uh, I first came in contact with you uh, on social media and read a lot of your books, read a lot of your articles. And uh, I really hadn't been that involved in social media up until, you know, I, I was on there in 2010, but I really wasn't that involved. You know, you have an, a, have an account and you really don't uh, get on that much. But around 2013, I began to uh, explore how I could use uh, social media for educational purposes, uh, you know, with politics, with economics, uh, with black liberation, I began to explore uh, being able to use that. And so uh, from about 2013 up to now, you know, I began to read a lot of what I would call uh, grassroots scholars or community activists, uh, however you want to call it. And uh, these folks were brilliant, you know. And um, so I started keeping those quotes and processing them and, and, and looking them over. And, and I said, wow, these people are really um, uh, brilliant, 
you know? I mean, we talk about uh, Dr. Amos Wilson and Dr. Claude Anderson um, and uh, Dr. John Henry Clark. And one of the things that, uh, that really uh, piqued my interest was when you told me one time that you know, it's great to know all of those quotes. It's great to, to be able to look at past history, uh, but it's, more, it's even more important to build upon what they do because, you know, a, a lot of times we have these long grunt sessions and these debates, and you and I have talked about this and a lot of other people uh, who are in our soaker have talked about how we get so uh, wrapped up in debate that we forget about uh, that we're supposed to be using this information, not to debate, not to beat on our chest, not to show how much we know, not to you know, uh, show how many uh, quotes we've memorized. We're supposed to build on that and we're supposed to take that and actually use it. Uh, I think uh, you even said at one time, it's actionable knowledge. It's not simply the regurgitation of that knowledge and beating on your chest. It's about the application of that knowledge um, people ought to be able to see in your walk and in your life and in how you live and, and the things that are important to you, uh, they ought to be able to see what your ideology is. So what I wanted to do with this book is give the grassroots uh, community scholars uh, a voice because they were basically sound, they've been basically sound and alarm to me for probably the past decade or at least the past seven years that I've been involved with social media. They've been saying, hey, we're on the wrong path. We're on the wrong path. This isn't going to work. This, you know, we've tried this for the last 50 years. Let's try something new. And people are shutting them down just for saying that. You know, um, we need actionable strategies. You know, we need, um, uh, you know, and this book was to try to inspire people to pursue other strategies and ideas and theories. And, and to produce people to, to, to move and to go into action. So that's kind of what this, this book is about, is to amplify those voices who people are trying to shut down uh, because they're not the anointed voices, um, right. you, you know. And so that's kind of what the book is about, Doc. And, and, and that's what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, it was kind of on my heart to, to get it out at this time. Uh, as you say, you know, as you get older, man, you, you, you start looking at your life and, you know, I know we all have bucket lists and I know that we all have, you know, guys our age, we have more years behind us than we have ahead of us. So, um, you know, if I was going to do a book, I wanted to do something that that represents me, uh, which is I'm interested in a lot of different topics. So rather than just uh, coming out with my with my first book uh, on one specific topic, choosing this format to do it in, you know, they, a lot of people have done. Uh, books on uh, quotes, but nobody has done it where they've actually provided a context and actually explained uh, uh, different ways of looking at the same quote because everybody can see a quote and, and, and pick up on different things. So that's kind of the background. I hope I wasn't too long winded on that. Oh, no, man. This is this is your time. This is your time. I'm I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I'm looking forward to some of the things that I uh, it's kind of interesting that you mentioned Dr. Claude Anderson, uh, Dr. Amos Wilson. Uh, you mentioned some people that were very influential in a lot of the work that I've done. Uh, I've had an opportunity to actually be in contact with Dr. Anderson uh, when I was creating the blueprint for African American empowerment uh, about five years ago. Him and his mm -hmm. wife, Joanne, uh, she was running interference because I was trying to reach out to him. And the thing is, people don't really understand um, right. just how committed this 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 uh elder has been to the work and so that's one of the reasons why i've been so oh yeah angry. he's still doing it at yeah he's still yeah. doing it at 90. yeah yeah he's still doing it at his age you know that's that's the thing that's remarkable right and like when i reached out you know i got her and she came back and she said hey look um i'm gonna look into what you're talking about i'm gonna check it out if i think it's worthy i'll bring it to him but it, if you get to him and just say black empowerment, he's going to say yes. And that that's how he is. So I have to check him because he's not young. At the time that I did this, I think he was 81 at the time. And so she said he's 81 years old and he's not as, uh, in, in as good a health as he used to be. And so I've got to monitor it. So what happened is they went to the site, saw what it was, and they actually endorsed it. Um, 
and and gave me their okay, and both of them gave me their thumbs up. We had some back and forth and some disagreement uh, because he still, at that time, I don't know where he's at now, but no, at that time, like I said, this was some years ago. At that time, he had he believed that we had we had reached that point of becoming a permanent uh, underclass, and I disagreed. And you know, but it was it was the, it, it, it it was uh, philosophical. And I understand what he was saying that basically, if you put the numbers and cross the numbers, we're so far underneath that we can't climb out. I'm just the optimist. There's no such thing as can't to me. So just based on that alone, I disagree. Mm-hmm. Because if you can't, why are you here? Right. And so we we came to an understanding right. that we were going to be uh, respectfully disagreeable in that area. But he he thought highly enough of me to also get get the book, The Miseducation of, of uh, African American Youth, uh, and he endorsed that as well. So it was it was a great experience, but. You know, to me, uh, two of the greatest minds that I've ever come across uh, as far as the dynamic of psychology uh, in African-American experiences are Dr. Naeem Akbar and at the pinnacle, Dr. Amos Will. Um, and you mentioned them. And I think that Absolutely. a lot of what they represent is talked about by these lesser known people. And I, some of their quotes are in the book, too. Uh, me having the fortune right. of being able to be the editor and publisher of the book, I got to get all into this. So I'm looking, I'm going, like, oh my God. But some of the names the average person won't know, but they are boots right. on the ground. They're locked in and they're actually doing the work that the anointed are not. Absolutely. And Absolutely. when we say, and when we say anointed, we're talking about the ones that are propped up by the establishment on either side. Absolutely. That push talking points that have absolutely nothing to do with our empowerment. Uh, so it was an honor uh, to be asked to be a part of this. I'm looking forward to some other things. We're going to talk about some other projects uh, at another time that we're going to be working on. Uh, one of the things I promised the people that I was going to do is I was going to uh, <clears throat> pull on your mind about some things that are going on that I think that we can actually tie into some of the quotes in the book, not necessarily verbatim, uh, but just knowing what we know about the people and the talking points of the people that made the quotes in the book. Uh, Mm -hmm. One right now that's still kind of hot is the fact that uh, Ice Cube came up with a contract for Black America and it was presented in one narrative by the Dems that he was endorsing Donald Trump right? and that he was working with Donald Trump when it really truly came out, he had went to both sides, which is how you play the game uh-huh. and said, Hey, here, here's my plan. Let's sit down and you t- each, each of you tell me what you got and let's right. see who gets close. And the Dems say, well, yeah, we'll, we'll do it, but we're going to do it after the election. And Trump, and again, this is definitely no endorsement of Trump, but Trump's right. people, I'm pretty sure it wasn't him, but his right. people said, sure, we'll sit down with you. And right. that's where it came from. What's right. your take on it? Well, I think Ice Cube is a businessman, and I think that uh, I think the Black Collective could take a page out of uh, business people, you know, particularly uh, uh, European business people always play both sides. Mm-hmm. I mean, how do you leverage if if both sides, if one side of the Republicans know for a fact that they can totally ignore you and the other side, the Democrats know that they have you in their pocket as far as getting 80 to 90 percent of the vote, you have no leverage. You've given it up. So uh, I, I look at it in a different way. I look at him uh, attempting to leverage it, and we should be leveraging it. But I'm, but but I've even said that what we should do is we should put a list of demands together, specific demands for Africa, specifically for African Americans, and make each party sign an MOU stating they will provide these resources and policies within the first 180 days of being in office. 
Why our black leaders have not done that, I don't know. Where are they at? You know, where are they at? These lift all boats, you know, I, you know, you get into these uh, debates with people online and they say, well, the, the Democrats do have, they, they are providing uh, tangibles, you know, and they'll, and they'll bring you this long laundry list of things and you look at them and they're not specific to us. They're what I would call lift all boats policy. They're not specific to us. They don't meet our specific, specific historical needs as far as, uh, you know, the oppression and, and, and the uh, exploitation that uh, we've faced over the last 400 years. They don't address that at all. Right. So um, that, that's kind of that's kind of my take on it. I, 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 I definitely agree. I think that uh, the one the person that I that comes to mind uh, when I think about what you said about uh, the ambiguity of the policies that the Dems present every time we ask for what ask, you know, well, what are you doing for us? Um, the ambiguity of the target um, mm -hmm. is something that Dr. Anderson has talked about consistently. Anytime they say people of color, anytime they use the term minorities, right. they're not addressing our specific issues. If you go back no, to uh, the, the, the Monaghan report, which was actually entitled uh, The Negro Family, A Case for National uh, Action, in 1965, he pointed out uh, some very interesting things. One of the things he pointed out is that the U.S. was going to be forced to see Blacks, uh, the term used then was Negro, to see Negroes as a unique population that could not be measured in any other way or standard by the life and experiences of anyone else. Slavery had forever changed the psychology and sociology of Blacks, the descendants of slaves, in a way that had to be considered when dealing with this population. And he told the Johnson administration in this report that if you continue along the path of creating social programs that undergird and support the black woman and the black child, but you alleviate the black man in lieu of taking the same money you're gonna use on these social programs and creating government jobs, giving the black man the job and letting him take care of his family, it's gonna disrupt and destroy the black community. Right. Now, Johnson was a Democrat. He had the research from a sociologist by trade who happened to be his political advisor, sit down and told him, this is not how you undergird the black family. He also told him in that, that if you don't consider the trauma that slavery created and how it will play out in their behavior, you're not serving them. Okay, so when we talk about policies, we have to talk about policies that are specific to our experience in this country. You can't lump us with other minorities. Their experiences are nowhere near our experiences. And so that is what I get from what you just said. That's what I get from Dr. Anderson. That's what I get from the research I've done myself is that if we consistently allow them to uh, clump us in the groups that don't that are ambiguous minorities, what you'll find is those minorities will actually benefit more from the policies than we will because they don't have the baggage that we have. They are not starting from as far back as we started. They are not a part of the initial caste system that was created in this country. While Italians came in and were looked down upon, while Irish were came, came in and were looked down upon, they never had to come from the stigma of being a, sl a former slave. They never had to come from a stigma of being animalized. Mm -hmm. They never had to come from a stigma that says your only use is. So yes, they were able to come in. And what we forget about and what we like to ignore, whether you're talking about the Kennedys or you're talking about uh, you know, a number of other Italian families, the Irishes, the tech, 
they undergirded and rose up in the ranks until they were accepted as white through the criminal element. They created their wealth through organized crime. And yet we are told, and, and anytime we see that same thing being attempted in the black community, it's the worst thing of the worst. You oh, got absolutely. It's the worst thing. Oh my God, look at, man, that's exactly what the Italians did. That's exactly what the Chinese did and are still doing. I'll give you an example. When I was a police officer in Indianapolis, we had what you call pea shake houses. And that basically is the lottery. And I remember in the eighties, them basically, this is before the lottery really got big in Indiana and other states all over the, the country. You know, they would ask us to go into these neighborhoods and shut the pea shake houses down. Uh, you know, keep in mind, you had a greater chance of winning pea shake than you would the, the, the Powerball or any of those things. Right. But a lot of those things that we did, like you're saying, we developed them. They told us it was criminal and then they monetized it. Same way with, uh, same way with uh, marijuana now, you know. Uh, we have brothers that are sitting in jail for, uh, for marijuana charges and now it's legal, you know, it's legal. And, and we, we're, we're kind of locked out of that, that industry as well, you know. So, so uh, I, that, that's an example of what you're talking about, how something is criminalized when we do it. And then uh, when someone else sees a way to monetize it, it all, all of a sudden it becomes decriminalized. Right. Uh, and, and, and so those are the things that I think that when we look at what Ice Cube is doing, my thing is, and I think you, I, I know that Neota Yor uh, also feels the same way. I don't think either one of us are real big on uh, celebrities taking the lead in our push. Uh, right. But when someone steps out and puts their money where their mouth is and they come up with something that nobody else is coming up with, my thing is we have to, you made this point earlier, that we haven't to this point taken our demands to any politician on a federal level. No. And no. said collectively, 45 million strong, this is what we're demanding. Absolutely. I mean, there are a lot of tangible things we could do. Like uh, one of the things I suggested would, since we didn't get our Homestead Act, the Homestead Act that, that, that gave uh, immigrants land uh, why couldn't they create a Black Homestead Act now and give us our land now? You know, give us right. our land now. Those are those are just that's just one thing uh, that they could do. They could uh, uh, give us two generations free of taxes. There are a lot of things that could be done uh, in lieu of reparations. I'm I'm for reparations, but uh, there are a lot of other things that could be done in lieu of reparations or, or while we're pursuing them. Those, those are things that could be done, you know, right. a black, creating a black homestead act, um, right. um, you know, so that, that, so that we could uh, build homes uh, and get, get low interest rate uh, loans uh, to, to build homes. You know, a lot of those things could be done. Bus business uh, 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 capital uh, that, that we could get, you know, and, uh, but, but nobody's asking, like you said, nobody is putting it on the table and saying this is what we want and you know it it just boggles the mind you just shake your head and it's like you know we're, we're not even asking where where are the lead where's the leadership to even suggest this right uh i mean and that's why i come to the defense of dr anderson uh so ferociously uh when he is attacked uh, is because he has for decades been the solo voice in consistent demands. Now, you know, the moment that Dr. King demanded it, they erased him. Absolutely. Uh, and most people don't realize what really went on. As long as he was talking about the dream and integration and all that, there was no real problem with that. It was when he right. decided that he wanted what was owed to us. And he right. had a plan of how he was going to get it that he be, became a problem. Um, but uh, Dr. Anderson has been talking about it. He's been before Congress. The problem is we are so splintered. There are so many schisms. There's so many differences uh, that divide us that we are so far off from being unified. There's this belief that we have to have the same philosophy across the board in order to work together. 
and right. that has kept us from standing together and becoming whole. Uh, it's not to me. It's not about finding someone that believes everything I believe. Like I said, you and I have become good friends, uh, colleagues that 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 ride hard together, and we don't agree on everything. Right. That's the reality of life. Both of us are married, and I'm pretty sure neither one of us agree with our spouses 100% of the time. <laughs> right, that's true. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. so then it's not about finding someone you can agree with. It's finding someone that's as passionate as, and committed as you are, that you can trust, that together you're going to use the collective mindset and push towards something. There are some things that everybody should agree we should have, and I agree with you. I think that in lieu of cash, ownership in certain areas is actually better. Absolutely. I would prefer the land. Yes. You know, and, I, and I'll be honest, because now we're in control of something that will always hold value. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you can leverage land and get cash. Absolutely. So, 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 so then that's how I think, but where are the demands? Again, well, uh, so is, and then we're gonna circle back around to the book. Okay, I'm gonna say this: we spend so much time competing with one another for who's the best debater, who's mm -hmm. the best orator, mm -hmm. who knows the most knowledge, who's the closest to Emotep. I mean, just <laughs> silly stuff. <laughs> that actually has right. no intrinsic value whatsoever. My thing is, and 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 and, right. and, 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 and I know we've had this conversation, and you know this about me probably better than anybody except my wife, because that's the conversations we have. Each one of the people that I hold dear, and I don't have that many, we have a different relationship. Our relationships are the things that we have soul talks when we talk. So, you know, my biggest concern in my life is the legacy that I leave. Absolutely. You know, I, the pats on the back, all that's good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. But what will my life say about me when I'm gone? Will the work that I'm doing now still be talking about me like the Amos Wilsons, like the Naeem Agbars, like the Francis Cress Wilsons? The reason that they are still being spoke of is because they did work that was beyond themselves. And that's where we are, right. you know, not working. We are working about how big can I build myself? I don't care what nobody thinks about me right now. I believe that the work that I've done, and you've actually, you, you're the one that told me this. You told me uh, this whew, probably, like you said, 2013, 2014, you told me, Doc, unfortunately, people will not know what they have in you until you're gone. And I, my response Absolutely. to you was, I'm okay with that. Hmm. And that's the kind of men we're going to have to have. We're going to have to have men who will, are willing to plant seeds that they will not live long enough to see come into fruition. Absolutely. We've got to have longevity in our dream longevity in our vision, longevity in our preparation. We're so busy trying to get that pat on the back, trying to get that moment of fame that we are taking these little bursts and, and being satisfied with them. Some of us are enriching ourselves through it, mm -hmm. but our people aren't moving. One thing I said, right. and then we'll move back to the book. One thing that I've always said, as long as you look at my life and I am an anomaly among my people, I have failed. Absolutely. I agree with that. If every yep. man doesn't have the same opportunity and be able to speak and stand and move in the same way, I have failed. It isn't about right. what I can do. It's about what I can get my people to do. Right. And so I think this book is, and by the way, the, the link to the book is going to be in the description box of this video. So everybody, when you see it, just go click that link, go grab it. I guarantee you, you are going to probably not put it down until you get to the end because it's just heat. It's heat. Um, and, 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 and of some powerful, powerful people, some known, 
some you haven't heard of, but you need to familiarize yourself with because everybody in that book is putting in work somewhere or has Absolutely. put in work somewhere. Uh, Absolutely. You know, so, so uh, when I think about the book, it's a catalyst and I think it's a bridge. We talked about this you know, when we first talked about the project, that it's a bridge. It's a bridge because there are people out there and we're being honest, we're not attacking anyone. But we're being honest, there's so many of our people that are not going to pick up a book and read. And imagine how many books you have to pick up and read to get a total understanding or an idea of the scope of the reality we live in. You got history, you got finance, you got psychology, mm -hmm. sociology, politics, all of these books you got to pick. How many of our people are ready to do that? In this book, you get a snippets that trigger you. Absolutely. You read it and you go, wow. Now you're thinking if you want to go research it, you got a starting point. Right. And literally, if you take these, these, uh, these quotes and you apply them in a sense of learning, I'm going to learn what, I'm going to figure out what this really means. I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to learn about the person who wrote it and get a better right. understanding. If you take that, that'll start your journey. It's going to be a long journey because trust me, Dr. 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 Blanchard and I didn't get here overnight. Absolutely not. And we were, we were here putting in work long before we decided to, to show academia what we were about. You know, uh, like I said, the doctorate is all good. It gets me in doors that I need to get into that don't recognize. Right. Uh, but, but I was talking about this stuff before I had my first bachelor's. Right. That's that's how seriously committed I was. I ran into Francis Cress Welsing on the Donahue show in 1985. I was 16 years old, 11th grade. 17 year old, 11th grade. Okay. And never looked back. She mm -hmm. triggered from her went, came Neely Fuller Jr. From that came Dr. Amos Wilson. From that came Dr. Naeem Ogbar. From that came Dr. Joy DeGray, Dr. Claude Wilson, Dr. Uh, John Henry Clark, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakin. And I can tell you how they appeared in my life because one person triggered me. Absolutely. You can't read this book without getting triggered. <laughs> that's true. And that's the joy of it. You will be triggered in a good way. Right. So my, 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 my advice is to go out there get the book, tell as many people as you can about the book and live the book, get into it. Make Absolutely. it be your first true commitment to sinking into the knowledge of what's possible with our people. And then from that point on, go for it. Doc, Absolutely. what do you have to say in closing? Well, I had, uh, I want to share a story with you. I think I shared it with you. I had a father who purchased the book last week and his son is a sophomore at an HBCU. And immediately he began to share a lot of the knowledge in the book with his son over the phone. And his son was so excited about the knowledge his dad was sharing in this book that he decided to come home, to return home, to get the book. And so when his, uh, the father shared that with me, I was, I was humbled, you know, that, uh, that he thought so highly of the book and that the son, and that's what it's about. I, you know, I want to uh, reach out to millennials, non-traditional students, old, young. Uh, and, and like you said, that's the genius of it is that, you know, because it's written, uh, even though it's 140, 45 pages, um, people have told me they've picked it up and couldn't put it down. Uh, and they're more likely to read it because it's broken up into the quotes uh, with, with, with some, uh, context at it. And, uh, you know, like non-traditional students, you know, uh, they, they, they'll, they'll read it. They'll read the whole book, you know, uh, whereas if they had to digest a whole lot of research and all of that, they may not, uh, they may not uh, pursue it that way. But like you said, they may pursue it this way and then be um, motivated to look into it further. And that's what we want. We want people to look into solutions no, no, no more debating. We, we, we've debated things into the ground. Um, and, and the blueprints for our upliftment, the blueprints are there. We just have to, to act on them and implement them um, and, and finance them. 
uh, that, that's what we have to do. And if you don't want to do the work, hey, finance somebody who is doing the work. You know, right. you, you can't sit on the sideline and do nothing. And that's what we have so many people doing. You can't sit on the sideline and do nothing. As you said, a pat on the back, a pat on the head, click and like, that does nothing for anybody. You know, you have to get in the game. Either get in the game or finance the game. I don't care if I, you know, if I can't get in the game, at least I'm going to finance it. I'm going to, I'm going to finance somebody who who is in the game. You know, if that if if you're not in the game, so and you that, know, and 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 that is so important. What we don't realize is we had some of the movements we have: the Black Nationalist Party, the Black Panther Party. Uh, one of the reasons, and people don't realize, that Sam Cooke wasn't killed. For what you think, Sam Cooke was financing mm-hmm. a, a, a powerful black political movement. Jimi Hendrix. Yep. Uh, I've been studying and researching his his death for probably fifteen years, and the more mm-hmm. I uncover, the crazier it gets. It's supposed to be mm-hmm. about an overdose in, in 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 England, and it turns out to be so much more. The people who have died that were connected to that. As it every time you reopen it, somebody dies. Right. <laughs> what it was is Jimmy had rose through the ranks and his career was blossoming, and he had committed to financing the Black Panthers. Mm. And the woman that was in the room with him the night he died, she's she eventually ends up mysteriously dead years later. But every time somebody would get a conscious. Mm-hmm. They would end up dead. Right. There are CIA ties, a, a, a bunch of other things, but basically they were shutting him down from financing the Black Panther Party, which Hoover at the time felt that and the Black Nationalist Party was the greatest threat to American security uh, right. because it represented Black unity, which was his greatest fear. Right. Uh, uh, and so uh, it's amazing that, you know, you talk about that funding. There are people who weren't on the front lines, but they funded it, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the thing that people have to get it. Not everybody's got the, what it takes to be on this front line. Right. And, 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 and it shouldn't be expected. You can't be what you're not. But if, right. you're in, if you believe the work is necessary and you believe the work that the people are doing is, is legitimate, then you have a responsibility right. to get behind it. So right. you get in where you fit in, you get in where you fit in, you use whatever, whatever gifts the creator uh, gave you. Uh, if you know what your passion is, you've been able to figure that out in your life. You use all those things uh, to do it for your people. You know, that's right. all it is, you know, and you hear me talk about wraparound services all the time, which is <laughs> basically basically the holistic uh, care of our people. You know, we talked about that uh, a lot of times. And, you, you know, when we, you and I were talking about how we might address uh, the victims of police action shootings and how that would entail all the different services, mental health services, uh, legal services, uh, uh, food, food deprivation, all of those things uh, these families are dealing with, you know, uh, right. uh, you know, when they, when they have a loved one who is, uh, who is uh, murdered, and they they try and they try to stand up. But uh, our whole community needs what I would call wraparound services, not not as a as a solution, but just as a stopgap until we deal with the underlying cause, which is economics and dysfunction, uh, education, and all of that stuff. But it, but but the nonprofit industrial complex cannot be the solution. It can't. No, it's it's not designed to be the solution. It's actually a distraction and a diversion of resources. Um, right. And if you don't understand that, uh, you tend to be pumping money into the very thing that is destroying what you find precious. Uh, right. uh, I don't think anybody points that out with as much intensity as Nyota. Uh, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and like I said, you know, Nyota, Latava, I mean, some people, there's some powerful quotes in there. Oh, by the way, uh, Dr. Blanchard and I are in there too. Uh, Absolutely. You know, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, like I said, uh, Dr. Blanchard has a brilliant mind. Uh, he challenges, you know, I'm all about, I'm that person that my great grandfather who reared me had a second grade education. 
And the one thing he would always tell me, you know, being that I was, you know, academically advanced, I always was in school. I was always grades ahead uh, of where I should have been. And what he always told me is, son, don't ever find yourself being the smartest person in the room. Absolutely. So I seek out people that I think know more than me. Mm -hmm. I seek out people who challenge me to think beyond the parameters of what I hold to be true. Because the moment you think you've discovered truth, you've only opened door to a greater truth. And if you become so adapted and clinging to what you think is the whole truth, you never discover that thing that will take you to the next level. So I'm always seeking. I'm never in that place. The moment I feel I've reached the fullness of a potential in a particular area, I move to something else and I start over. Why? Because it's my responsibility to grow. And Dr. Blanchin has played a major role in that growth. Uh, I think that that's something else that black men have to learn how to do is be okay with sharing the love, uh, sharing uh, the praise, uh, Absolutely. uplifting one another. And I think that is immensely important. So this brother has been a blessing to me. Uh, and I'm grateful that, for that. Like I said, check out the book. The link is going to be in the page. Uh, I mean, in the description box. Uh, give us some feedback on it. Tell us what you think, because it's going to go through some revisions over time as we decide to add maybe a few more uh, quotes, but also uh, I've been going through it since we've published it and looking at uh, uh, different ways to contextualize it, uh, to give it even more meaning. And so at some point, we're going to drop that second edition. And so just look, I mean, we, we, we are really truly trying to make an impact. That's what this is about. This is about saying, okay, this is not working. What else can we do? And I just think it was genius. I think it was absolute genius. Uh, to sit up and say, we're going to publish a book of quotes with context. And I'm excited about what it'll do. The feedback we've gotten so far has been unbelievable. So let's, 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 let's make it happen. Let's make this special. I would love to see this book actually get on the bestseller list. That would just totally be an awesome thing for me to sit up and have played a role in something of that magnitude. I think that we as a people, all we need is 25,000 copies sold. It's 45 million of us. Mm -hmm. The book is $23. It can be done. And so that's going to be my goal is to get Doc to that bestseller list. Um, you know, I've never even thought about it for me because, of, you know, my books are 400 pages with quotations, citations, and, and, you know, the average person looking at this book and going, who really read that? You know, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, you know, but this book is a hundred and something pages. And because it's broken down into quotes, you study moving from thought to thought and you don't get bored. Absolutely. You, you don't get bored at all. You just keep going. I'm, gonna, I'm I, I edited the book. So I'm literally sitting there and I'm going like, wow. It, and it took me a little longer than I wanted to to edit. I got done ahead of schedule, barely, but it took a little longer because I'll be going and I'll go, oh, I'm, I got to go to social media and make a post about this because it's trick. Like I said, it will trigger you. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, get excited about it. Doc, I want to thank you for taking time out your busy schedule. Um, you want to tell them a little bit about the work you're doing down there? Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, I have a couple projects that I'm working on. I'm going to talk to you about it uh, later this week off camera. Um, but uh, I am working on a documentary. I got a call just yesterday, Doc, about uh, another producer that wants me to work on a documentary. They both are in the... Uh, or have to do with extrajudicial uh, uh, murders of our of our folks. Uh, documentaries on those topics. Um, so you know, like I said, the work that I've been doing, even when I left law enforcement in '98, I continued to be engaged. Uh, since then, I've, I've I've done work in in education for over 25 years. 
uh, I'm sorry, education and law enforcement, a combination of 25 years uh, and the last seven years in uh, what I would call non-traditional education and community colleges. So that kind of spurred the book as well. But um, I hope people will go out and get the book. Uh, you, you'll definitely hear from me in, in 2021 with these documentaries. Uh, there might even be a, a special guest in, in, in these documentaries too, somebody they might know, somebody <laughs> I'm looking at right now. But, uh, but, uh, but, 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 but um, these documentaries are gonna be uh, 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 hopefully seen on uh, Netflix and some of the other platforms. And they, they will definitely be outside the box just like this book and they will be challenging us to get involved and actually do something and providing solutions. Awesome. So definitely go out and get the Black Book of Lamentations. Uh, again, I appreciate your support uh, and I uh, appreciate your, your uh, Facebook uh, followers and everything. And uh, you know, you'll, you'll hear from me again soon. Sounds great. On that note, we're going to check out here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Don't forget, get the book. Uh, show your love. If you want to show some support, you can also do that as well. But definitely go out and get that book. On that note, I'm going to check out of here. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here. Dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group. I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now, I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day. Jay, people talk Real about talk, it, all of the elements.